Hi, and welcome back. Now, we left the last, uh, last part of this lecture off by a, with a question about finding the determinant of this particular 4x4 matrix. So it gives you an opportunity to try your new skills. So we have a matrix with lots of zeros, and what we learned is we should pick a row or a column that has lots of zeros and do our expansion along that, since it will simplify our calculation. So obviously, a good choice would either be the first column or the last row. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, you always get the same answer. I decided to do the cofactor down the first column. You may have done the cofactor down the last row. Either is fine. And I've written out the first step here. So the determinant of A is minus 1, 1 plus 1. So just to kind of reinforce what goes up here, we're looking at the position of these numbers right here. And you're looking at the position where it is in the matrix, and then you're adding those two values together. Right, so three is in the spot one, one of your matrix. So we're taking one plus one as our exponent. So minus one, one plus one times three times the sub matrix that you get by wiping out row one and column one, and then plus some sign plus or minus one times zero, because that's the entry in the matrix. And then I'm just writing out the determinant of the sub matrix you have to find. Now I'm not doing all the details, right? Because I have all these zeros here so they actually all just become zero. So the determinant of my matrix A really boils down to now finding the determinant of this three by three matrix. So here we're seeing again, the recursive nature of the definition of determinants. So in step B2, I'm gonna let B be this new matrix, and now I need to find the determinant of it. So again, we decide, well, which row or which column do we want to pick in order to simplify our calculations? And I've already said that I'm going to do the cofactor expansion down the first column. So let's do that. So I have the determinant of B is going to be minus 1 raised to 1 plus 1 times 1. The submatrix so I get by wiping out row 1 and column 1, so minus 1, minus 2, 0, 2. And then as I'm going down, the rest of the columns are zero. So in fact, I can just say plus zero, plus zero. I don't want to waste our time writing out uh, plus or minus signs because they all disappear. But now we're kind of heading into the home stretch here because this is a two by two matrix and we know how to compute the determinant of that. So we have minus one raised to the power of two times one times, and in here we get negative two. So we end up with minus two in this particular spot. And I'm actually gonna write this in maybe what seems kind of like a strange way, but I'm gonna write it as one times minus one times two, okay? And the one here is coming from here, and the minus one is coming from here, and the two is coming from there. Now we have to kind of go back and finish what we're doing, all right? So let's move back here. So we have that the determinant of A is minus 1 squared times, oh, I'm going to have to scroll back down to see what it was. So the 3, so we get a 3, I get a 3 right here. And then the determinant of that matrix, of this matrix right here, which we just computed, which is written in this way. So we have times one, times negative one, times two. And I can rewrite this as three times one, times minus one, times two. So the determinant of my matrix, see if I can get it on, oh, I can get both on the same slide here. The determinant of this matrix is given by this value right here. And if you stare at it for a second, you'll notice some very nice things happening. You have a three, three, one, one, negative one, negative one, two and two. So is this a coincidence? Okay, in fact, it's not. There's actually a theorem hiding here in the background. Okay, and the theorem says that if you have a triangular matrix, so remember a triangular matrix is where all the entries below the diagonal are zero or above the diagonal are zero. Um, then when you have one of these two types of matrices, then the determinant of your matrix is just simply the product of the diagonal entries. Okay, so it's very easy to compute. So these are 
the diagonal entries. Now, pay attention, this only holds for triangular matrices. And we see that this is indeed the case in our example because these are the diagonal entries of my matrix A. Okay, so scrolling back here. So here we've now seen the, the definition of a determinant, different ways of computing it, and a nice way to compute the matrix if it's a uh, is if it's a triangular matrix. Now in general, unfortunately, there's no easy formula. There's some special cases. But after the break, I'm going to show you a nice shortcut for a 3 by 3 matrix.